going to be. As we ask the Map Gnome. Backwater Gulch. Map Gnome, what are we playing on? Backwater Gulch, Sir Nine. Sir Nine. He's called me JP. Yeah, he's like, sup, JP. You guys go way back. But for me, I was recently knighted, and gnomes have big respect for knights. Just read fiction. So as we go into the game on Backwater Gulch, we've seen that the build order from Kiwi Kaki ends up being very solid if you can get past that initial warp gate defense. Yeah. Now, Backwater Gulch is something that we were talking about earlier. It's just a map that's spawned some great, great games mm -hmm. here in this tournament thus far and also in the Latin American Invitational that happened uh, two days ago. So if, uh, if that's anything to say, we're going into game three here between Liquid Huck, between Ray and Kiwi Kaki. This might be an incredible, incredible match, Sean. I mean, this is actually quite a surprise, I think, to a lot of people to see Huck struggling against Kiwi Kaki, but it is no surprise to someone who has watched all of their matchups in the past. These two players have gone head-to-head -head in countless PvPs, and it always ends up being very, very even. I still even remember way back in 2010 MLG Raleigh, when Huck and Kiwi Kaki had an 8 vs. 8 Colossus battle, <laughs> microing those around, it looked like War of the Worlds. It yep. was awesome. Let's go ahead and do some player shoutouts. We have Rain Kiwi Kaki spawning as the yellow Protoss down here at the 5 o'clock position and his opponent from Liquid.net. Going to be Liquid Huck spawning as the red Protoss at the 11 o'clock position. Team Liquid has one other member in this tournament, Liquid Chef, who's sitting pretty in top three right now in the winner's bracket finals, where he will be up against Dignitas's Select. Huck would love to be able to get up into that top three position with him as well, hoping that both of them can advance, but he is going to be up against one of the most solid build order crafters I've ever seen, Rain Kiwi Kaki. <laughs> Kiwi Kaki doesn't play Stark. He plays Buildcraft, Sean. Buildcraft. <laughs> it's a fun game. What you do is you start out with an axe, and you just keep punching blocks, and then a build order pops out. I see what you did there, Sean. Oh, I'm a very, clever. very clever. Yeah, now, of either. course, if you are just joining us and not really sure where these games are going to fall into the bracket, the winner of this match is going to be going ahead and playing against E.G. Idra, which will for sure be a great best of three, a good old ZVP, regardless of who's going to be winning here. But I know... A lot of players are going to be cheering for Huck simply to be seeing that game. At the same time, Kiwi Kaki does have a great win record against Huck, I believe. Or, excuse me, against E.G. Idra, I believe. So regardless of who wins, it's going to be a great match. Definitely. I mean, Kiwi Kaki and Huck, both in a very tense position. I think Idra is delighted to see both of them having the good old struggle match. He wants to make sure they're worn out and feeling mentally defeated before they even go into the game. He's such an evil genius. He is such an evil genius! That's what you said, but with more emphasis. We do see the cybernetics core going down for Liquid Huck. We also see the cybernetics core down oh, for Kiwi Kaki, but a little... Oh, he, he almost hey, loses the oh, probe again. Kiwi Kaki keeps the probe alive. <laughs> and that is uh, such a remarkable thing, because in the past two games, Kiwi Kaki has lost the first probe, but he did not even take any HP damage there. He is on the ball, one might say, Sean. Indeed he do. And there's the Zealot now popping out, Kiwi Kaki. Looks like he wants to keep this probe alive. He is trying to get a sense of the energy that is built up on that Nexus. Always a gigantic signifier of what is to come. Kiwi Kaki again with this clever little timing where he gets out two Stalkers and that first Zealot by stuttering his probe production. Very uncommon to see a player able to get out two Stalkers and one Zealot off these two gateways that early in the game, JP. Very nice voice question there, Sean. <laughs> now in the middle of the map, we have a zone from Hut controlling the zone Naga Tower. It looks like that Stalker will be joining him, and this is something that happens uh, quite a bit in PvP. We will have the first engagement be a Zealot on Stalker, kind of micro-war, but uh, not sure if Kiwi Kaki is going to be the one to move out. See a forward pylon here being placed on the right-hand side Ooh. from Huck. Looks like Huck has some devious intentions in coming. We do not see him going for his usual fast robotics facility play. We see Kiwi Kaki doing the same build that he has done in every game here on this map. He has already gotten his second geyser up. Huck is still trying to catch up in the gas count. But Kiwi Kaki, again, very prepared player. Would not be surprised to see him have a planned defense against this three game. Oh, Kiwi Kaki moving back inside of his base, which looking like it was just scouting for any uh, pylons very, very close. 
but he will not be able to find them. Warpgate research has finished for Huck. It will be finishing here for Kibikaki in about five seconds. The sentry is out, which means that Kibikaki's probably going to be playing a little bit more defensive here. You see a huge warpin from Liquid Huck, and he's going to be going for some offensive maneuvers here. Uh-oh, looks like the three gate now finishing up for Kiwikaki as well. Both players planting at Cybernetics Core at the same time, but we Here do see the unit go. advantage does go to Liquid's Huck. No, it looks like Huck will be able to pick off the Zealot, and oh, oh. both of them lose the Zealot in the unit's loss tab. We see that Kiwikaki has lost a little bit more because every game he's certain to lose at least one prober. But amazingly, three probes ahead at this stage in the game is gigantic in PvP. Both players in sync now with their robotic facility coming out. Kibikaki was usually a little bit behind, meaning the observer from Huck was able to get in and at least do some scouting, but now it's going to be in sync. As we see, Huck has fallen back to his main base. Kibikaki still remains at his ramp. Whoa! And we see a robotics bay come down from Huck. Typically, we see a uh, Twilight Citadel for that blink, but nope, he's going to begin that all-important Colossus. You see an Immortal coming out there for Kibikaki. Now, if Kibikaki can get in and do an attack with that Immortal and his units, he's going to be catching Huck off guard without the added support of that Colossus. But it's got to happen. It's got to happen pretty quickly here. I mean, I think what Kibikaki will likely plan on doing is still getting that Twilight Council, and there it is. He can rely on a Zealot count that is decent enough to combat the Zealot count of his opponent. He's going to use his Immortals to try to rip through the Colossus and or rip through the Stalkers, and most importantly, try to get that Blink into a good position. And amazingly, Huck is going for an expansion. Whoa. Oh no! Now, if this were White Raw, that that Robo Bay would be used for the <laughs> Warp Prism Speed, and we'd see a Warp Prism pop out for harassment. But I I'm really nervous for Huck at this point in time. This is amazingly the style that he consistently did in early beta. Now, how much is this Nexus really going to hurt Huck right now? If he can actually get it up, get it saturated with a couple of probes without Kibikaki really knowing what's going on. The observers are about to cross path here in the middle, but he will not actually see it. So it will possibly get over to the natural and in fact see that Nexus going down. Observer has stopped for Huck. And uh -oh. oh, he gets around a little bit, but Huck has seen it. He wants to deny this Observer so, so bad because he does not want his opponent to see the Nexus going down. Oh, and he and gets he a couple shots. does not see the he Nexus. does not see the Nexus. And in the meantime, we see a big force moving forward for Rain Kiwikaki. He has that probe leading the charge. And the Nexus immediately canceled by Huck. Wow! Uh -oh. and Blink about to finish here for Kiwikaki. He can, of course, utilize that Blink as he does take out one stalker there in the middle to blink onto the Colossus, take him out, and then that will just do so much damage for him and really hurt the army of Huck. But we do see quite a bit of Zealots. He's going to keep those around his uh, Colossus, possibly. Huck has just lost a ton of units. I mean, the units lost have. He had 100 a few moments ago once this army moved out for Rain Kiwikaki. It has jumped up to 850. Go, Sean. This is going to be a very bold play. We see that the range is not quite yet done. Desperately trying to finish that in time. The Blink Stalkers being able to look up onto the high ground. But it looks like Kiwikaki will be forced to retreat. Both players have four gateways up. More Stalkers incoming for Rain Kiwikaki. How will he deal with this increasing Colossus count? I mean, Huck with the brilliant decision to take the expansion, get himself the Colossus up, and then cancel it upon seeing this push. And look at this, Whoa. Kiwikaki expanding to the top right. We rarely ever see the game get to this stage, but it is a correct decision to expand to opposite locations on the map because the Blink Stalkers are so mobile, you can manipulate this exact army where everything must stay tightly packed to the Colossus. Kiwikaki, or excuse me, Huck, after he takes his expansion, will also need to get Blink himself uh -oh. before he can really push against these different locations. Those Colossus do have the extended Thermal Lance, meaning they have range 9, so Kiwikaki does not want to engage into that, but he also wants to try to deny the expansion from going down as much as possible. As the third Colossus does come out, Huck is going to be moving outside of his base, possibly putting down that Nexus here very, very soon as the probe is in place. Should be going down here any second, but Huck is also moving out. He's going to be seeing this forward pylon. Kiwikaki does not want to fight that fight with those three Colossus. Oh, on a map like Backwater Gulch, there's so many up and down paths that these Colossus just live very comfortably. 
climbing up and down, shooting everything from afar. But Kiwikaki is going to be planning on doing a lot of blink counter attacks into the main. In fact, very often it is always correct to do the counter attacks. And if for some reason a base race situation comes up, all you have to do is snipe his observer, get a dark shrine, and you can easily eat away at his expansions. And a nice probe transfer timing by Kiwikaki. And here's the big counter attack coming in. That is going to be the blink of all blinks if he can get into oh and he oh, does oh wow and there Huck he is actually in the middle of the map going all the way to that zenlock tower and the colossus does come oh, out oh no oh no the colossus and it will, and it will do, do, oh my god he didn't shoot it and, there it falls. and now he's able to take out the robotics facility he's shooting the robo bay as well wants to keep that colossus count nice and low but oh no too big of a risk move from kiwi cocky can he blink down no he misses and is going to lose a big amount of stalkers here some solid damage was done though Kiwikaki trying to find some exit for these stalkers, and it looks like no. They do get taken down, but in the unit's lost tab, we see a giant amount lost there for Liquid Huck, but in the unit station, we see the